Okay. So now that your lighting is finished, the next task is to create a camera movements and render them as a show reel. Okay. So you also need to create a wireframe so you can show how much detail you have created. So wireframe is basically the lines that you're seeing here, right? So it will show how much detail you have created, what kind of edge flow you have done. Okay, so that is also very important. Okay, now, whether it is interior or exterior, you need to have at least five to six different shots. Okay, so every uh, showreel is going to be 15 to 30 seconds duration, right? So you need to have each shot at least three to five seconds. So don't make fast movements, always make slow camera movements. And also don't make the camera go crazy like this and this and all directions and all, okay? So make slow, smooth camera movements all the time, okay? So let's say for example, I can start with a simple dolly in shot, okay? So this is my camera, we're using the perspective camera only. If you want, you can create a custom camera, but that's not necessary for now, okay? We're gonna use the perspective camera only, and we will render through the perspective camera only, okay? Now again, keep in mind, you should not show any of these edges, okay? So this outside should not be visible. So everything that you're showing us has to be based on what content that you have created, okay? Even if you have exterior, make sure that the place where the sky is touching the ground should not be visible, okay? The earth should not end somewhere, okay? Imagine that you're creating something that is going to look like a real world. So in real world, earth doesn't end, right? Unless there is a cliff, okay? Fine, so create some kind of background always to fill up the background area, like mountains or buildings or trees or something. Fine. So let's say here's my first shot. So my first shot is going to be a simple dolly in, okay? So I'll start from here. This is my frame number one, the beginning, okay? Now, I have hidden my timeline. I don't see it. So in case if you also don't see it, you can go to um, window, UI elements, and there you will find command, sorry, time, time slider and range slider. So click on this one and also click on this one, range slider and time slider. So time slider shows you the current time that you're in and range slider decides what is the range of the time slider, okay? So if you have 120 frames only here, if you wanna increase that, you can increase that or decrease it using the range slider, okay? So let's say I wanna make this shot to be like um, three to four seconds. Okay, so roughly it'll be 100 frames or 120 frames. So let me make it 100 frames. Okay, so one frame, one second is 24 frames, two seconds is 48. Fine, so I'll start from here. So this is my first frame. Now I have to say, tell Maya, okay, my beginning of the shot is going to be here. So I'm going to create a keyframe for the camera to say that the camera is going to start from this position. So for that, first, now you see I can select all these objects, right? But I want to select the camera. How can I select the camera that I'm looking through? By going to this view menu and clicking on select camera. So now this is going to select the camera that you're looking through. So how do you know that the camera is selected? You see there is a white border you, around this object, right? Around this uh, camera's viewpoint. So when I select an another object, you see that white line is gone. But when I select the camera, it shows me a white line here. So that means now I know that my camera is being selected. And also in the attribute editor or channel box, it will show the perspective camera here. That means I have selected the camera, fine? So now let me go to the channel box and I wanna create a keyframe for translate and rotate. I can select all the translate attributes and the rotate attributes, right click and choose key selected. When I do this, you will see a red color highlight here. And you will also see a red highlight here at frame number one. So now we have told Maya 
this camera is going to be in this position at frame number one. Easy, right? And then I want to go to the end, or maybe I'll go to 72 frames. Frame number 72, or let's say 100 frames. And at 100 frame, what I want is I want the camera to dolly in, go inside, okay? So easily I'll press Alt key and click and drag, you see? That's the dolly in shot that I want. So this is the last frame. Now it's not enough. In the beginning we have made a keyframe, which, which means it shows red color. In the end also we have to create a keyframe to say that this is my last position. So here, earlier when I created keyframe it showed dark red, right? Now it became pale or pinkish color. Which means these attributes have keyframe, but not in this keyframe, not in this frame, okay? So now, if I right click again, choose key selected, again it becomes red, and you see a red line here as well. Now we've created two keyframes, one at the beginning, one at the end. And if I play, you see, I have my animation. It is very important that you select the camera, if you select another object, the keyframe will be created for the other object, okay? So make sure that you select the camera, create the first frame, go to the last frame, change the camera position, create the last frame, finish. So this is my short one, okay? Fine, so once you have finished this, by now you will actually have your file in the rendering, okay? Keep in mind, you need to have different versions of your file. When you do the final presentation, you have to show how your modeling only looks, how your texturing only looks, and how your lighting only looks, and how it looks finally after the camera. Okay, so you have to have different uh, stages as of your work as well. So make sure that you have your progress, work in progress as multiple files. Now, so this is my first shot. So what I'll do is I'll go to File and choose Save Scene As, and I'm gonna save this as Camera or cam one, save. Okay, so camera one is saved now. Next we have to create the second pose, right? So this camera already has two keyframes and I wanna change those keyframes now, okay? So let's say instead of going from uh, zoom in or dolly in, I'm going to make a pan from left to right this time. You can either delete the keyframes and create again, or you can edit the keyframes, that's up to you. I'm gonna delete the keyframes and create again, okay? So I'll select all these, right click, and choose break connection so that it'll remove the keyframes. No more keyframes. This is my first position. If it's difficult for you to position it, you can also go to the top view, and you can adjust it here as well. So if I just move this out like this, maybe I move it towards this side, and I can rotate it as well, however I want to position it. So that's it. So this is my starting position, okay? So I'll select all these guys, keyframe, make sure that you have selected the camera for that, okay? So that's my first frame. I'll go to the end. This should be easy, I'll just move this out here. And rotate it very slightly towards this side. Okay, again, another keyframe here. So first keyframe and last keyframe. Let me play that back. Play from the beginning, as you can see, this is my second camera position. Okay, so all I can do now is I can go to File, choose Save As, and name this as Two. Now there's something that I forgot to do for shot one itself, but I'll do it for shot two, you can do the same thing for the shot one, okay? So if you do it for once, you don't have to do it over and over again. You go to render settings, and now we have to tell Maya how we want to render this scene, okay? For this, there is a checklist that I have given in Teams so that you can follow that also. What all steps that you have to do to make sure that you have a proper uh, export. Okay, so first things first, give a name to your shot. Okay, so this is my shot two or camera two, fine? And 
what format I want to export this. Format is going to be PNG. Okay, next. Do I want single frame render or I want a sequence of render? I want a sequence of render, right? So I'll choose name underscore hash dot ext. Very important this, okay? Now, when you add this, there's a hash symbol, right? So the hash symbol is going to be replaced by frame numbers, okay? Now, the frame numbers, how many frame numbers you want to have? You have to write here. Generally, we can give four. You can also give up to three, four or three, which means it will add that many number of digits for your frame number, okay? So otherwise, what will happen is if you don't give this, if you give zero for this, after 9, it will go to 10, right? So when it goes to 10, there's two digits. What happens here is, when it goes to two digits, when you import this into Premiere Pro, after 1, it will take 10. It will not take 2. But when you add these extra digits, it will add 001, 002, 003. And finally, what will happen is, when it goes to 10, 0, 1, 0. Okay? So it knows that it's a bigger digit. It'll have to wait till it goes through everything. So that's what you're seeing here. When you see four, that means it'll add three zeros before one. So zero, 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 one. Okay? So that's what you're seeing here as a preview. So we have frame number one to frame number 10. What is our duration? What is our duration here? What is the last frame? 100. So this is my start frame, that is frame number one, and end frame is going to be 100. So if you have 48 frames, you have to write here 48. If you have 64, you have to write 64. As many frames as you have, the last frame you have to mention here. Which camera I want to render? Perspective. If you have other cameras, you have to choose the camera that you want to render. Clear? And then resolution here, preset. You can choose HD 720, but if you want to have a higher resolution, you can also choose 1080. But keep in mind, if you choose 1080, the render time will be more. For our submission, 720 is enough. But if you want to make it look better, you can render 1080. Up to you. Is that clear? Any questions so far? No. Once this is done, we're going to close this. Make sure that we're saving this project. Now, let's say I go to frame shot number three. Okay, so my shot number two is finished. I'll go to file, choose save as, and I'm going to camera three. Now, I saved camera two, right? Which means while I am working with camera three, I can render camera two. Now, this depends on the power of your computer. If your computer is powerful, you can do it. If you're doing it in your laptop, better not do it. Finish all your shots and then render one by one. Is that clear? OK. So in my case, let me go here. Um, I haven't done this in Mac. Let me do it for the first time. So we have our documents, Maya, projects, default scenes. OK, so that's my project folder. This is very important. You have to have your files in your project folder. Otherwise, when you render, it will not choose the textures properly, okay? So let me go to my project folder, which is Documents, Maya, Projects, Default, and Scenes, okay? So here is my camera one, camera two, and camera three. Now my camera two is ready with all the render settings. In camera one, I did not do the render settings, so I'm gonna do it for camera two, okay? So right click on it. In Windows, if you right click on the file, you go to this show more options, okay? And there is an option that says render, okay? So once you click on it, it will open a small window and it will just do start doing the rendering by itself. And how you know? You know the renders are happening by going to your images folder. So in images folder, you will see those images showing up. So all the images will start popping up here and then you can bring those images into Adobe Premiere Pro where you can simply import them as a video instead of just single images. 
You click on the first one and choose numbered stills, it will bring all those images into one video. So like that, for each shot, you will have one video. You edit that, add music to it, do whatever you want, add your name, add submission, submissions and all those details that you do generally with all assignments and export as MP4. All right, let's say for some reason uh, it is not working for you or you are not able to render from the file. What you can do is you go to rendering options and go to the render menu and there <coughs> you will find uh, render sequence. So go to the options and make sure that you're choosing the right camera and click the render sequence and close button. Okay, so what this will do is this will uh, render every single frame. You can actually see how much time it takes for rendering a single frame. And these frames will be automatically saved into your images folder in your project. So it, this is where it is important that you have to have your project folder set properly and make sure that <clears throat> you check your files after being rendered in the images folder. At any point of time, if you're not happy with the result that you're getting, you can always cancel it make the changes that you want and you can start rendering again okay good luck